Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Yes. So I wanted to tell the community that this is probably the last class, I believe, uh, for September. And um, it has been wonderful to partner with North and Westwood Public Library to bring this program to you on Friday mornings, uh, sometimes from my inside my home and sometimes from outside in my backyard and to be able to share with you my many loves for birds and yoga and meditation and just enjoying nature um, every day, making it part of your life. Today for the last class, I, I thought a lot about what I should uh, do um, we had a little conversation before the class and they wanted me to continue the class. So I'm not sure in what form I will continue the class, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. Um, and I'm not sure which day. But in the last class, I wanted to also share my um, love for acupuncture with all of you in addition to doing meditation and yoga. So uh, I will see how I can tie the acupuncture or acupressure that you can do at home using uh, some yoga practices and some common things that you can use acupressure for. So I just wanted to give a new flair. A lot of people wanted to bring my, my singing bowls out, which uh, you know, I thought about, but I said, how about something new for all of you? And then you can go back to your singing bowls at another point of time. So today we will do chakra healing. I haven't done chakra meditation with you. It's a Buddhist practice. Uh, chakra in Sanskrit means uh, a wheel or circle. It's a wheel and circle of life. And even in Chinese uh, medicine philosophy, um, the circle comes up a lot. Um, the, there are 365 points in acupuncture and they are also in a circle and just reminding us that, you know, the earth revolves around the sun and the sun revolves around a larger galaxy and we are part of this circle. Um, and, uh, and we are also part of our community, which is where we are right now. Uh, and we need each other. So um, let's start chakra meditation by closing your eyes. Again, just focus on your breathing. Inhaling and exhaling, just noticing, not making any judgment on your breath or on your body. Just being where you are present in the present moment. 
experiencing whatever you are experiencing wherever you are. Chakra healing or chakra meditation, there are seven chakras in our body. Today I'm just going to focus on the heart chakra, which is right in the center of your chest. So imagine this glow of red light that's spreading from your heart. It's warm, it's luminescent. And from your heart, it's spreading to the whole of your chest, up your neck, into your face and your head, and covering the top of your head, and then slowly going down your shoulders, your arms. And this red light is enveloping your abdomen, your buttocks, your legs, your feet, and every toe. And you're just covered in this red light that's coming from your heart. It's warming you from the inside out. It's kind of like a heater in the cold weather. And it's all inside you. But your feet, it's, it's warming everybody else around you as well. You are, you are the light and the heat of so many people around you. You don't even realize it. You're breathing as, you, and as you're inspiring, the heat in your body increases. So focus on your breathing and imagine this beautiful red light completely covering you and warming your body. Now imagine a white light that starts from your head and covers your whole body. Very slowly, it's going down, covering the red light with the white light on top now. You feel very peaceful. And your breathing is slowing down. And you're relaxing. Both from your feet, from your heart, this white light that is coming from your head, from the top of your head. When you're breathing and letting everything relax. Now you are in kind of a white bubble with all that peacefulness And your bubble can roll from side to side. And it can bounce on the water. And you are nicely cocooned in this bubble. Just breathing and relaxing. And now your bubble is floating two beautiful vistas, mountains, the forest, the birds. You are safe in your bubble with your feet from your heart and your head protecting you. And you're enjoying everything from within you. Relax 
relaxing, enjoying what you're seeing, all the beautiful skies. Sometimes it takes you to an island, your bubble. Sometimes it takes you to the sea. Whatever your heart desires, whatever your head desires, you can bring it out from your mind and enjoy that. For a few moments, you forget about everything that you have to do or would do, and just bounce around from place to place, but relaxing for you. Breathing, knowing that you're safe in your body, It has taken you through a lot, and it will take you to further heights. All your feeling is within you. You just have to tap into it and relax. Our feet connect us to our, the earth, and our head connects us to the heaven. So we get energy from both ends. Let yourself relax. Your head relax, your shoulders relax, your chest, your abdomen, your pelvis, your thigh bones, your knees, your calves, ankles, and all those bones in your toes. Just let them be soft and not tense. Notice every body part, but it is not tense. Even those little lines between your eyebrows, consciously relax that. All those lines on the top of your head, you can relax that as well. Once everything is relaxed, you can open your eyes and then notice the beautiful blue light that you will experience after a deep meditation uh, session. You have completely relaxed you now. It's for 10 minutes. And so you can do 10 minutes of meditation daily, make it part of your practice. And if you do two or three breaths, I said do three breaths, by just totally relaxing yourself and not thinking about, you know, things that you have to do or where your mind takes you. You can direct your mind where you want to take it. And all your feeling and all your vacation, everything is inside you inside your head, you can go to places just by turning on your head TV, okay? So today I wanted to mix my practice of acupuncture and, um, and yoga. So since both practices have been there for thousands of years, and most likely people from China came to India, and from India they went to China, um, and there was exchange of information between people. There are some similarities. Not everything is similar because they have different languages and different practices. But I find some things are connected. And um, one of the things that is connected is from the top of your head, there is a very important point here, view 20, okay? It's on the top of your head. If you take a line, 
that goes from the ears up to the top, it's a point right here. And this is a point that connects us to heaven, it said, but it is also a very important point for yoga. Many of the practices that we do when we invert ourselves, we touch this part of our head, and this is a soft part of a baby's head also. It's called anterior fontanelle. And it is soft. And you can, you know, you need to take care of it, right? Everybody says, oh, that's the soft part of the baby's head till the bones actually form. Your brain is in direct connection to um, the sky. And then over time, as the brain growth occurs, the bones fuse and close this top of the head, okay? And so this is an important point for both yoga and for acupuncture, okay? When you press and massage this part of your head, you feel relaxed, okay? And you can do this yourself. You can massage this part of your head for relaxation. You can use your hand for just using the tips of your fingers and in many practices, including massage, just massaging your head gives you relief. You can do it for yourself. You don't need anybody else to do it. Of course, if you have somebody else, it's also very nice, as you know, the head massage, okay? And you can just use this if you are feeling like a headache is coming on or you're too stressed. Just use this to relax yourself. Okay, and after every yoga practice, you can do this and just let all the tension that you develop go away. Okay, there are two very important points right behind your ear and where your skull um, is uh, on the side. You can feel these two points behind your ears. If you press these points just below them, just use acupressure and just massage it, you will have a lot of relief from neck pain. Okay? From neck pain. And the ear. The ear has many, many acupuncture points. Just our whole body is actually represented in our ears. And if you use two fingers, index and thumb and just go around all the little crevices in your ears just pressing it both from the front and the back many many organs back shoulders will get released by just doing this practice of pressuring your ears okay in islam they have uh, they have to do this ablution this what they pray and they have to clean their ears every day five times a day and they have to go through all of these crevices before they can be cleaned for the prayers and so without knowing they are doing acupressure for themselves for their whole body and then they pray and they put their head down on the ground, they are activating the juice print. So some of these practices that were there in the olden days have uh, many benefits that, you know, now we can connect it with uh, all the knowledge that's available. So the head has many, many good acupressure and acupuncture points that you can activate yourself or do yoga, then you do inversion, or if you um, touch the head to the ground, and you will get the energy from the ground in, into your head. So that's the philosophy. Okay, now we have done many shoulder exercises and our spinal exercises, and the spine has many acupuncture points along the size of the spine, the center of the spine. And you can activate those again by just pressing wherever your arm goes to onto your pelvic bone, which is right, you know, where your butt is. If you just go up, 
wherever it ends, that's all your pelvic bone. And you can use your fingers, two fingers, to massage these points for additional relief. And if you're lying on your back, so it's hard to show you on a square, you can use those points just by rolling. You can massage your kidneys, you can your back, and you can get a good massage of your spine by doing this. Even just lying on the floor, but lying straight on the mat, you can activate many of the points just by doing nothing, just by being present and laying on the ground with your arms out. Okay. So some of these things, you cannot get the benefit from a chair because chair was not designed in 5,000 years ago on getting benefits of yoga. But you can do it at home by laying down in the floor. Okay. Um, now we are going to start an important yoga pose, which is the yoga pose warrior one. And you will bring your right foot in a right angle like this. And you will bring your left foot in this fashion, bringing it down. Now, here we are activating many of acupuncture points that are located on our side of our uh, thigh bone, okay? And many of our toes have many important acupuncture points, including our soles. And you can use the chair to pressure your inner thigh, a point that we never think about using, you can pressure it and raise your arms and you're getting acupressure benefits along with yoga. And of course, this is a meditative practice, so you're going to be breathing, inhaling and exhaling and being focused on what it is you're doing. You're it's not an easy pose, so you have to kind of think about it and balance yourself. Then very meditatively and mindfully, you will bring your arms down, you turn around slowly. You don't have to do jerky movements. Even if you do two or three yoga poses a day, but do it slowly, you are going to get more benefits than just swinging into one thing to another. Same posture on the other side. And now you are activating the inner thigh on the right side. And you are activating your toes because it's touching the ground in this fashion. And you'll raise your arms up as much as you can. And you'll focus on pressing your right tied to the chair and feeling the pressure points being activated in your warrior one pose. And then mindfully bringing your arms down, not swinging it or anything, you have now activated a lot on your inner side, okay? And when we can do another inner thigh pose. We can bring the right leg over the left leg. And then we can, if you can, you can bring your right leg around the left calf. You are going to activate both inner thigh at pressure point. And this is an important pose, like I said, for the Rudasana or either pose. And when you pull, I metrically, it means that in your mind, you're pulling your scapulae apart. You are going to feel beautiful stretch in a lot of your muscles like rhomboids. And they are very important for your posture. So again, mindfully giving yourself a hug. You open your arms out and you bring your right leg down and you bring your left leg on top of your right leg and push it around if you can in this fashion. 
and then you do the opposite pose. Mindfully breathing in and out, and in your mind's eye, you pull your two scapulae, which are the two bones on your back, important for your shoulder, just pull them apart and feel those muscles stretch. And breathe. And then give yourself a hug. I love my body. Say that to yourself. And then mindfully bring everything down. Now you have done two yoga poses in a very mindful and slow manner. And that is a good thing. You want to do things slowly, not rush. Now we are going to do the warrior two pose, one of my favorite poses. And think just like warrior one, you will bring your right leg in this right angle fashion. And then you will bring your left leg, but rather than turning it this way, you're just going to keep it stable. Just a little bit wider than this one is more at the right angle. And slightly turn the left knee inward and raise your arm to 180 degrees, like a straight line from your middle finger of your left going to your clavicle and ending to your right middle finger. Everything is in a straight line. Yoga is also a lot about geometry. And so I always think in geometric shape. What angles am I creating? And then I use my eyes to kind of eyeball things and make sure everything is in line. And then I focus on the nail of my middle finger. I notice my fingers. I like to keep everything equal. I notice my wrist in my mind's eye. We have so many neurological processes happening as we do these simple movements. Hold it. And then turn your right palm up to the sky. And then bring it up with your left hand. Hold the chair and then look up. This is called Peaceful Warrior. As your hand is holding on to something, it is activating a lot of acupressure points in your palm. And a lot of good benefits are happening even as you do this pose. Slowly bringing it down mindfully, we will do warrior two pose on the other side in the same fashion, set yourself up. Not too much, just a little opening and then inward rotation of your right knee. Bringing your arms again up. If you get tired, you can stop. Try to get your arms in a straight line. Holding there, breathing. The longer you hold poses, the stronger you will get. Most of the time what we are doing is fighting with our brain, saying we can't do this. But if there's pain, you can stop. But you can work through most things to become stronger. Now you will turn your left palm up to the side. Bring your right hand to the chair. And as you get more and more flexible, you will get lower and lower. You can hold it also to where you are. And you can bring your hand up 
and with your eyes, you're washing your little fingers. All of these components of yoga where you are washing what you're doing are as important as doing it because you're completely involved in your body. You're not watching CNN and just working the stairmaster or the elliptical. You're completely involved in your acting, in your breathing, in your noticing, in your noticing all the benefits of all the active pressure points, and also just bringing your hands in namaste is a very uh, powerful uh, position and you bring your thumb to your heart center and press it and you are activating a lot of meridians of Chinese medicine. So when you even do simple moves like namaste, you are doing a lot of benefits for your shoulders, your posture, your heart, your chest, and so you should do it very mindfully and get all the benefits with a single move rather than to do a lot of useless moves without purpose. So that is, you know, my lesson for today is to do everything with purpose. So one of the very important moves I have always said for the heart is to bring it down to your to do a forward bend, okay? It relaxes your muscles and also your back and builds strength and gives your neck a break from always holding you up. So do as far as you can go. Your knees are bent, so it should be easier. But if you have back problem, you may have a hard time doing forward bends. So bend and let your tummy relax on side and hold your feet. Massage your toes if you can. Don't forget about them. They carry you all day long and they need your love and attention. And then you can just get your head down between your two knees or even your eyeballs on your knees. Be in this position of relaxation as long as you can take. Some people have difficulty breathing when their chest is on their belly and they feel like they need to get out of this position sooner than they should. So if you can work with your body and just relax, you will get more benefits. So we are going to do it one more time. And then you slowly come up and you have done forward bending, which is very good for your back and pelvis and you massage your toes if you could and that, that's all helpful. Even if you couldn't do your toes, if you just use the hands to massage your legs, there are some very, very good points on your tibia that are so good for immunity, so good for whole body relaxation. You could use that to just improve your circulation as well. If you have diabetes, you need to have better circulation in your feet, and this can also help you a lot. Another thing that you can do that I can show you in the yard is um, just getting your legs up a wall, okay? Legs up a wall like drains all your stagnant blood from our feet because you're always standing or sitting. Um, there's a lot of 
cooling of blood during the day, which hopefully during the night gets a little bit better by laying down. But again, it's not draining it completely because we are not raising our legs up. And you can also raise your legs up while in a sitting position like this, or, you know, it is really good for your core, but it also drains the stagnant blood that is in there. And as we get older, the veins in our body, especially the long veins that are in our legs, they have valves and they don't work as good as they would for like a child or a baby. So over time, our valves don't do well. So we have a lot of cooling of our blood in our legs. And, and that's why sometimes you see, you see those spider veins or, you know, very close veins because the valves don't work so well. They have to go to other places to get up to the heart, okay? And, um, and so, you know, over time, you can get swelling or if you have other diseases, you can have ulcers or things like that on your feet. So by simply making it easy to invert, you can use the wall and just put your legs up the wall, you know, just for a few minutes or so, all that blood will drain down into your, just by gravity, it will come down. And that will be very helpful for, um, for better circulation because then when you bring your legs down, you'll have new blood that will come in. So it's a no issue, okay? And that's one of the things that they say in acupuncture, which Western medicine can understand is like, these are nourishing points or this will tonify your body. And they, they feel like these are like ambiguous words, but really there's no good way to explain it because you do gravity and other things that are already there in nature to help your body when you use exercise or, um, you know, you learn all these things and when you do physiology, you know, different laws of physics and things like that. But somehow by the time we come to practice medicine, um, Western medicine, we forget all we learned in physiology on, you know, the body mix. And uh, I want to bring that back into medicine and bring that back into our understanding of treatment that, you know, doctors are not just about writing prescriptions and giving vaccines and doing research, but really using our body to heal ourselves, okay, and not using, you know, more medicine, um, but using a lot of different philosophies to treat patients. So I want to thank you for all the time that uh, you have spent with me on Fridays for many months, and I hope you enjoyed um, the beautiful that have been visiting my bird feeder or the sound of the Carolina wren or my dog who refuses to join us for the last um, episode. Um, she is guarding a tree from a squirrel. That's her job. She thinks um, she gets paid in uh, chicken. Um, so, um, I wanted to thank everybody and do my last namaste with you. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well. <laughs>